Good morning. I've just come out of uh, Carrick Fergus. I've come through Carrick Fergus and I have just stopped at the entrance of Bluefield Lane and Donaldson's Avenue on the other side because there's a particular place I want to visit here. I've been uh, waiting to visit this for some time. It's on my to-do list. Um, and it's not the uh, not anything to do with the monkey puzzle tree which is growing up here. But it's to do with the sign here. This is the sign for the Andrew Jackson Cottage. And there's a US Rangers uh, exhibition down here as well. Uh, American Rangers. So um, it's easy to pass by this. Um, you're just a, about a, a mile from uh, Carrick Fergus um, city centre and you, you could just drive past it so quick and you need to know when this place is open. Um, it's only open Wednesday through to Sunday I believe and uh, the opening time is 11 o'clock to 4 o'clock so if you arrive any other time uh, you'll find the place closed. Not sure whether it's manned by volunteers or not um, but uh, I'm just going to take a wee run down and have a wee look. This was the original reputed site of the ancestral home of Andrew Jackson, President of USA, 1829 to 1837. This is the reason why the original um, Jackson Cottage was demolished. They wanted to build a railway and the cottage lay on the projected railway line route. So, and you're right on the shores of um, Belfast Lock here and Carrick Fergus Castle, one of the best examples uh, of a Norman castle in Good Nick um, is down here and there's Belfast Lock. Andrew Jackson Cottage, parents of 7th US President Andrew Jackson emigrated from their cottage at Boney before to the Carolinas around 1765. They settled in Waxhaw region. Andrew Dobbs of Castle Dobbs, Carrick Fergus, was governor of North Carolina at that time. And so many uh, Ulster men and women emigrated um, from their homesteads here and uh, did big things in uh, America. So this is the, um, this isn't the, the original Andrew Jackson homestead, but this is something very, very like it. And this is a notice board giving you a lot of information about this. Um, from White Washed Cottage to White House. Isn't that good? The single range thatched cottage was built in the 1750s by Ulster Scots family, the Donaldsons and used as a family farm until uh, the late 1970s when it was purchased by the Borough Council. Cottage is set out with furniture and equipment of the period and bedrooms display Ulster made quilts. The interpretive galleries will take you on two emigration stories. Travel from Solway Firth across North Channel to County Antrim and find out uh, about life in the 1770s. Ulster, Ulster 
and of the French invasion of Carrick Fergus. They joined the Jackson family as they emigrate to America. So this was a sort of a launching off point for them. They stayed for uh, a number of years and then moved on and discovered the story of their remarkable youngest son, Andrew, who rose from humble origins to become president of the United States. And also we have here the Rangers Lead the Way. The U.S. Rangers Museum on the grounds of the uh, Andrew Jackson Cottage is an exhibition dedicated to the U.S. Rangers. The elite American Army Regiment formed in Carrick, Fergus in 1942. And this was the only uh, American unit that was formed outside the U.S. during the Second World War. And the photograph is of an American soldier during the D-Day landings, 6th June 1944. And this is the thatched cottage that is very similar to the one that the Jackson family would have uh, lived in. And you know, I'm just looking down the road here, and there's another thatched, thatched cottage that is actually occupied. It's still in use today, and it's in very, very good nick. So let's see what it says here. Andrew Jackson Cottage is one of the most important. Uh, Andrew Jackson was one of the most important presidents of the U.S. in U.S. America, or American history. All previous presidents had been from the upper class of American society. He was the first citizen to be elected to a highest office. Jacksonville democracy is still regarded as one of the most distinctive features of American political life, and yet his family roots are in the Scottish Quarter end of Carrick Fergus here at Boney Four. Boney before and at Bella Hill. And that's all the information there. And this is information about the uh, US Rangers. Um, first American troops arrived in Belfast 20. 6th of January 1944. During World War II, over 37,000 GIs passed through Northern Ireland. The first battalions of the US Rangers were formed from volunteers recruited from US Army units stationed all over the country. Rangers were based at Sunnylands Camp for their initial training and induction. Major William O. Darby that was Darby's Rangers, was their first commanding officer and on 19th June 1944 the Rangers were officially activated as a combat unit. Their task was to act as a spearhead force for invasions during World War II. This is, this is a role they continue to perform throughout the world today as an elite combat unit of the American Army. And the first thing that strikes me about the back of the house here is the where the windows are positioned. And the size of the windows. You'd think they would all be the same um, size and at the same level, but no. That's, that's the way they did things in those days. It's just a pity I can't get in here. So, the Andrew Jackson Cottage and the US Rangers uh, Fighting Unit Museum and at the back and I can't get into them. I don't know why. 
and um, it's still up on the websites that it's, it's open. And I was talking to the lady who lives just opposite to the Andrew Jackson uh, Cottage Museum and she tells me that the whole place has been cleared out recently because they're going to re-thatch it. Now, I know nothing about thatching, but I'm looking at this thatch, and do you know, I have seen houses with far, far, you know, I, I, I'm saying that this, you know, I'm saying that this thatch to me looks good. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, but uh, it's a shame that the wee cottage is closed and emptied and I reckon it'll be a, a year before there's a train going by. It'll be a year before that uh, it, it ever gets opened again. That's disappointing. And people come in maybe a distance to see this and it's all shut. Oh dear. There you go. Another hidden gem just outside Carrickfergus.